Hello everyone, this is Mark and I have a video today revolving around the baseball board game named Payoff Pitch Baseball. I, I did another video where I used the Payoff Pitch Baseball to replay the 1978 one game playoff between the Yankees and the Red Sox. This video I want to show you how uh, the program works and also use the program to see uh, how Payoff Pitch Baseball does as far as kind of tracking to what really happened in the year of 1978 in the American League. So um, as a reminder, one of my hobbies is to write computer programs that actually play baseball board games. In the, in, and I write them so that they look like the baseball board game as much as they possibly can and that they play it exactly the same way as the the game would play if you were using you know dice and cards and charts and paper and pencil and all that kind of stuff but you don't need all that kind of stuff when you when you play it in one of my programs so like i said before i showed you one game and i played the whole game through this time i want to show you you know how um playing the game automatically with this uh, program compares to what happened in 1978. And let me tell you how the program works. First of all, um, there's different options. You can play one game, uh, you can manage both teams, or you can let the computer program manager that I programmed manage the, the team that you're playing against, which is kind of fun. Or you could play uh, a whole season of games uh, of your favorite team and let the computer manager play the team that you're playing each day and also play all the other games so that uh, you know you have stats on all the other teams that are in the league and see if you are going to um, end ahead of them or behind them at the end of the season. And then the third way to do it is it'll just play all the games in order that they were really played using the starting lineups and the starting pitchers. And then it does that very quickly, uh, all 1,900 and some games, and you can look and see what the results were because you can look at you know the standings and the individual statistics and team statistics and league leaders and all kinds of stuff like that that I programmed into this program uh, because it's interesting to me. So uh, the way the game works as I programmed it, as Payoff Pitch Baseball uh, has a way that you can choose to play it, and it will check every time a base runner reaches, whether that base runner is going to try to steal. And if he's going to try to steal, then he, then it steals for you. And it also checks each batter uh, when there's a bunt situation to see if that batter is going to bunt or not. And if it batter is, is going to bunt, then the, then the batter bunts. Payoff Pitch Baseball also has a way of um, driving pitcher fatigue. And when a pitcher gets fatigued in Payoff Pitch Baseball, uh, it's a certain number of innings uh, you know, also based on runs a little bit. If the if the starting pitcher is, is pitching a shutout, then he never gets fatigued. But if he's let up three runs or more and he reaches his inning of fatigue, then he gets fatigued. Similar kind of thing for relievers. So in this program, um, I let the program decide who steals. I let the program decide who bunts. And I let the program uh, decide when to put a relief pitcher in uh, based on fatigue. And the way it picks a relief pitcher is that uh, it's based on how many games each relief pitcher for each team has pitched in that year. So if a pitcher um, relieved 100 games and another pitcher relieved 50 games, then that first pitcher will have twice the chance of getting selected as a reliever. Uh, and then when it gets to the ninth inning, it picks the closer um, in closing situations. So that's how the program works. I actually ran quickly before this video 20 runs of the season, and I'll show you right now how that ended up. And in the East, uh, the Yankees won 14 out of the 20, and the Brewers won five times, and the Red Sox won once. So th these are the actual 1978 standings that you see, and then in the red are how many times that that team won when I did a season replay, and down in the West, the Angels won. Well, that's not right. My mistake there. It was the Texas Rangers that won 14 times, like that, 14 times, and the Royals won six times. So whoever managed the Royals should get a bonus for actually winning the division, and then whoever managed the Red Sox should get a bonus for tying the Yankees and having their one-game playoff because in this game, the Red Sox 
only managed to win one out of 20 seasons, and the Royals won only six out of 20. And for some reason, Texas uh, won a lot. We're going to have to take a look at that a little bit on why that's happening. So that's how that worked out. Then what I also did is I wrote a little program because I wanted to test and see if the, you know there was a right number of bunts and a right number of steals and you know right number of innings pitched and, and singles and doubles and triples and homers and runs scored and all those kind of things. So let me show you um, how this works. So um, first of all, I'll zero it all out. So now we have nothing. There's no games played. So now I will tell the computer program to run a whole American League season. So that's 1,900 and some games. And it runs through each games really quickly because it's a computer. And at the end, I can look and see at the standings. And in this case, the Brewers won the division and the Texas Rangers won the Western division. So neither of the teams that really won it won in the game. Now, the Yankees are close in second. Actually, the same record, 99 and 63. Uh, was their record in this replay is what they had in real life. Okay, and the and the Orioles who won the division as in second place. So let me show you the, the program that I wrote to check to see um, how close the game is to what really happened. So, so the season I just ran in the computer program, it says this game, and the column that says actual is what really happened in 1978. So you can see at-bats per team, pretty close. Hits per team, doubles per team. You can go down all those those numbers, and you can see that the game, you know, is pretty good. There's about the same number of run run score in the game as in real life. Same number of home runs, same number of triples. The the sacrifice bunts are close, but and it figures out automatically when to bunt. Stolen bases per team are close, and it figures out who to steal based on, you know, who's on base and and you know the the situation, how often that person steals. Innings pitched are pretty close, and strikeouts per team are pretty close. So I would say that the, this game, you know, uh, in my way of checking it, it looks okay. And let me run another season. Let me, I'll zero everything out again and show you again. So there we are zeroed. So now we run another season. Let's see how this works out and how closely it comes to 1978. I'll look at the standings. This time the Yankees won the division and the Royals won. So th this is closer to real life. The Brewers didn't win, the, the, but the Red Sox did not come and tied for first. So that's a little different. So now if I go to my little program that compares things and I run that again, you can see the numbers changed a little bit in the this, this game column, uh, but they're still pretty close to what really happened. So I will try one more time and then we'll look at some other stuff. I'll zero it out again. I'll play another season. And ding, ding, ding. Doesn't take long. And now we'll look at the standings for that third season I just played. There's Boston. Okay, Boston Boston won the division. And the Yankees did not do so good this time it ran. And Texas, you know, ran, won, the, won the West. So that, that's kind of common in this game uh, that I have here, that Texas wins the West. And, and usually New York wins the East. So let's take one more look at how close it comes to um, the real life, and I'll hit a button, and it'll relook at this, uh, the stats for the last season I played. So that this game changes a little bit, and but it's still close. So this this game and the way it plays, it plays pretty close to real life. And let's go back to see what we can see. So I can look at a team. Let's look at Texas and see why they win the West all the time. And I'll look at their batting uh, results from the last season that just got rerun and you can see you know how they hit they got bobby bonds hitting 34 home runs that year they got a 252 batting average um but they score a lot of runs let's look at their pitchers to see if their pitching is what is getting them to win all the time so we'll look at texas pitchers and they have john matlock and virgie jenkins and Matt, doc medic and doyle alexander um, their ERAs are, are pretty good. 3.16 for the team. Reggie Cleveland got 16 saves and Lynn Blade got 10 saves in my last replay. Some pretty good ERAs and, and the relievers down at the bottom there. You can see that the order I have them here is the same order as you'd see them in baseball reference. That's how I program my game. So there's the starters up at the top. Then they chose the closer. And then, you know, the bottom half is like a mixture of starters and relievers. Um, with the higher number of games appeared uh, above the, the lower numbers. So you, you, if you check the number of games 
here against what happened in 1978, I suspect it would be fairly close. The number of games started would be exact unless there's a you know a, a player that started a game in the real year that's not part of this game. So that's how that works. So there, there's that. Let's take a quick look at the Yankees since they seem to win all the time. And here's who they had in 1978. Nettles had a good year, 38 home runs. Reggie Jackson, 31 home runs. Chambliss was on that team. That was a, that was a fun team. They had Mickey Rivers, the speedster playing center field. Um, so that's that. That's their stats. And then their pitching, you're going to see that it was John, it was uh, Cy Young Award winner Ron Guidry that was amazing. And he's usually amazing each year. His his record was 25 and three in real life. Now it's 23 and five. So it's it's pretty close, 2.1. So it, it this game plays pretty close to real life. And the one last thing I'll show you before I sign off, is I programmed it to be able to look at all the league leaders. So we will look at the league leaders for the American League batting, and we'll start with batting average, and we'll say that you need 458 bats. So there, in the last season that I ran, there's the leaders in average, and the red one is the one who actually led in the real 1978. Let's look at home runs. Jim Rice had a fantastic year that year in home runs. We can just toggle through. There's RBIs, Jim Rice again. Number of hits, Jim Rice. So he, he's red. He led in the real, league, the real season, and he, and he led in this replay. And he usually does in his replays. George Brett led in doubles, but he didn't lead in this replay. There's Rice again with the triples. Ron LaFleur had the most stolen bases, and he did in this game. Ron LaFleur had the most runs scored, but Rice beat him out in this game. And then the slugging is like this. Let's look at the pitching, and then I will let you go, because I don't want to make really long videos, because some of them can get boring. I know. Pitching statistics, earn run average, let's say you've got to have 200, 200 pit innings pitched to get in this list, and there you go. Gidry's the leader. My guess is Gidry's going to be the leader of wins. But that was next is inning pitched. Jim Palmer pitched the most innings in real 1978, but Kansas City's Dennis Leonard pitched more here. And that's all based on um, their fatigue, because the game will take him out when he hits fatigue automatically. There's strikeouts. Gidry had more than Nolan Ryan, who had the most in the real year. There's wins. Oh, Sorensen from Milwaukee. That's a surprise. There's losses. There's saves. Gossage was the save leader in 78. There's games pitched. And then I have a thing that kind of throws some numbers and looks at the ERA and the wins and the saves and, and throws a list out of who might be the ERA, who might have been the Cy Young Award winners. In 1978, it was Ron Guidry. And uh, I'll give it to Guidry since their team won the division and he had the best ERA uh, and the most strikeouts. I'll go back to... I'll go back to the American League batting, and I'll look at the MVP candidates here because it's just kind of similar. It looks at average and home runs and RBIs, and it gives you a list of who the who the most likely candidates would be for the MVP. Uh, in real 1978, it was Jim Rice. Fantastic year in 78. And in this replay, he had a similarly great year. So I'll give him the MVP of the season that he just replayed that took about 10 seconds <laughs> with this game. So... That's that. Uh, that. I think it's interesting to uh, look at these games and see how they work and program them up and let the computer run out a whole season and then see how the game played against the real-life um, season that, uh, that actually happened. So with that, I will uh, sign off for now and uh, wish you a good evening.